$44,800. That's what F-35 burns in extra fuel costs every single flight hour. Not total fuel cost, extra cost just because it refuses drinking standard aviation fuel. F-35 demands JP-8 plus 100, specialized Pentagon-grade fuel costing $8 more per gallon than regular military aviation fuel, and it burns 5,600 gallons per hour. But here's what that picky fuel requirement really means. You've just given your enemy a single choke point, disrupt that specialized fuel supply, and billion-dollar stealth fighters become lawn ornaments, gripen, pumps diesel from generator trucks and keeps flying, fills up at civilian gas stations if needed, runs on ethanol, biofuel, whatever's available. If it combusts, Gripen operates on it. This isn't about saving money. This is about what happens when your supply chain collapses and you need defending your territory anyway. Alert Nunavut, 817 kilometers from North Pole. Master Warrant Officer Tom Harrison. Arctic storm delays his fuel delivery three days. JP-8 running critically low. Russian bombers increasing activity, generators full of diesel, ground vehicles full of gasoline. Grape in scenario, Tom transfers diesel from generators straight into fighter tanks, aircraft launch, Russian bombers intercepted, sovereignty maintained. Everyone tolerates reduced base power for three days until fuel delivery arrives. F-35 scenario, Tom watches $90 million stealth fighters sit useless while Russian bombers probe unopposed because F-35 won't drink diesel won't drink gasoline, only drink specialized JP-8 plus 100 that's delayed three days by weather. American F-22s scramble from Alaska defending Canadian airspace because Canadian fighters too picky about fuel. Pentagon's leaked logistics assessment revealed the scale, $340 million additional annual expenditure, globally maintaining F-35 specialized fuel requirements. Multi-fuel alternatives eliminate this logistics premium while providing operational resilience when supply chains fail. $340 million every year, globally, just accommodating F-35's refined pallet. We're exposing why fuel flexibility determines who controls their airspace when logistics collapse, and Arctic logistics collapse constantly. March at alert, the fuel crisis. Let me walk you through the fuel crisis Tom Harrison actually faced, because this isn't theory. This is what happened when weather decided testing aircraft assumptions. Alert. Nunavut, Canadian Forces Station Alert, Northernmost Permanent Military Installation. Tom Harrison, CF-18 Maintenance Chief, 26 years experience. March, Arctic Storm Season, at peak fury. Scheduled fuel resupply. C-130 transport carrying JP-8 tanks, delayed 48 hours by blizzard conditions. Tom checks weather, delay extends 72 hours, then flight canceled completely. Next weather window, five days minimum if conditions improve. Tom inventories available fuel, JP-8 in fighter tanks, 12,000 gallons, critical emergency reserve only, diesel in emergency generators, 8,000 gallons, gasoline in ground vehicles, 3,000 gallons, diesel in construction equipment, 2,000 gallons, total combustible fuel at alert, 25,000 gallons, but only 12,000 gallons his CF-18S will accept. Operational requirements. Russian Tu-95 bear bombers increasing Arctic patrol frequency, testing Canadian response times, probing air defense gaps. Canada must maintain intercept capability. Can't wait five days hoping weather cooperates. Tom calculates consumption rates. Two days remaining JP-8 at normal operations tempo. Then decisions get hard. If alert operated gripens, Tom's math changes completely. 8,000 gallons diesel from generators becomes usable, transferred to Gripen tanks. Aircraft operate normally. Swedish Air Force proved Gripen performs identically on diesel versus JP-8. Zero performance degradation. Sovereignty patrols continue. Russian bombers get intercepted on schedule. Base power reduces to essential systems only. Everyone accepts cold showers and reduced electricity maintaining fighter operations. Weather clears day five. JP-8 resupply arrives. Tom refills generators. Normal operations resume. Crisis managed through adaptation. Tom's actual CF-18 reality. Day one, normal operations. Day two, ration JP-8 carefully. Cancel non-essential training. Day three, reduce patrols. Stretch fuel maximum range. Day four, critical decision point. Zero 0600 hours. Day four, JP-8 down to 3,000 gallons. Maintain operations risking complete fuel exhaustion or ground fighters preserving emergency reserve. Tom grounds fighters. 
Sovereignty Operations Halt, Russian Tu-95s probe Canadian airspace that afternoon. No Canadian intercept capability. NORAD Coordination Center contacts. Tom, confirm negative Canadian response capability. Tom confirms. Elmendorf scrambling F-22s cover Canadian airspace. Tom watches American fighters launch from Alaska defending Canadian territory. Not because Canadian pilots unqualified. Not because CF-18 mechanically incapable. Because Canadian fighters couldn't adapt to available fuel and American fighters carrying enough range covering Canadian airspace from Alaska. Sovereignty surrendered temporarily. Weather cleared day six. JP-8 resupply finally arrived. Canadian operations resumed. Russians observed everything. Canadian air defense depends on perfect logistics. American backup required when logistics fail. Tom's classified post-crisis assessment to Canadian Forces Command. Multi-fuel capability isn't luxury preference. It's operational necessity. Arctic environments where fuel logistics systematically unreliable. Aircraft requiring exclusively specific fuel types become strategic liability when deliveries fail. Weather delays deliveries constantly here. Multi-fuel adaptation maintains sovereignty. Single fuel dependency surrenders sovereignty. Your first shareable line, F-35's $8 per gallon fuel premium doesn't just cost money. It costs sovereignty when Arctic storms delay specialized fuel delivery. Gripen running on generator diesel means weather delays base comfort, not national defense. Engineering for adaptation versus engineering for perfection. Screenshot that. First controversial position, F-35 fuel requirements. Assume American logistics infrastructure maintains specialized fuel availability everywhere continuously. Tom Harrison's alert crisis proves that assumption fails Arctic realities where weather controls logistics, not Pentagon supply officers. When aircraft design assumes operational perfection, environmental reality creates strategic vulnerability. Multi-fuel capability acknowledges logistics fail and builds resilience through adaptation. Comment whether fuel flexibility matters for Arctic sovereignty. If you're connecting why boring fuel logistics actually determines combat capability, hit subscribe. This gets more revealing. Swedish engineering, designing for reality. Now let me show you how Gripen achieves multi-fuel operation because this capability didn't happen accidentally. Swedish engineers designed specifically for imperfect reality. Gripen's Volvo RM12 engine, Swedish modified GEF404, incorporated multi-fuel capability from initial design requirements, not added later as upgrade, built fundamentally into engine from day one. Why? Swedish defense doctrine assumes wartime scenarios where enemy attacks fuel infrastructure first, depots destroyed, distribution routes cut, specialized military fuel becomes unavailable. Swedish fighters needed operating using whatever fuel civilians have. Gas stations, diesel trucks, agricultural supplies, emergency reserves. Engineering challenge, different fuels combust differently. JP-8 burns at different temperature than diesel. Diesel has different viscosity than gasoline, ethanol, has different energy density than petroleum. How design one engine tolerating all these variations reliably? Swedish solution, adaptive combustion chamber design tolerating different burn characteristics without damage. Computer controlled fuel management, adjusting injection pressure. Timing, mixture ratios automatically based on detected fuel property. Robust components handling viscosity variations. Pumps, filters, seals engineered for fuel diversity, not fuel purity. Result. Gripen operates on JP-4, JP-5, JP-8 military fuels, civilian diesel, any grade, automotive gasoline, 87 to 93 octane range, ethanol blends, E10 through E85, synthetic biofuels, aviation biofuel mixes, whatever combustible liquid available, Gripen adapts and flies, grade JP-8 plus 100, 12 to 14 dollars per gallon, difference. $8 per gallon premium just meeting F-35's fuel purity standards. Scale across operations. F-35 burns 5,600 gallons per flight hour at military power settings. Multiply by $8 per gallon premium equals $44,800 additional hourly cost, purely from fuel requirements. Not total fuel expense. Additional expense above standard fuel costs. Canadian fleet projection, 44 F-35s flying 200 hours annually, each generates 8,800 total flight hours times 5,600 gallons per hour. 
equals 49.28 million gallons consumed over 30-year life cycle, times $8 per gallon premium, equals $394 million additional Canadian expenditure just accommodating F-35 fuel fastidiousness. But financial cost remains secondary concern. Gripen runs on whatever available. Check maintenance personnel report Gripen fuel flexibility dramatically simplifies field logistics, reduces operational costs, increases aircraft availability rates. Identical missions, different fuel requirement, measurably different operational outcomes. Brazilian Air Force values Gripen fuel flexibility specifically for distributed Amazon operations where establishing specialized fuel distribution infrastructure, operationally impossible. Forward jungle airstrips refuel from local civilian diesel supplies. F-35 equivalent operations would require constructing specialized JP-8 plus 100 distribution across Amazon region. Logistically impractical and strategically vulnerable to disruption. Third controversial conclusion. Fuel requirements expose fundamental design philosophy. Pentagon assumes operational perfection. Sweden assumes operational failure. When reality matches assumptions, each approach wins. Arctic operations regularly contradict perfection assumptions. Storms disrupt logistics predictably. Distributed operations contradict centralized logistics assumptions. Extended conflicts strain supply chains contradicting unlimited resource assumptions. Multi-fuel adaptation wins when reality refuses cooperate with perfection assumptions. Final question, should Canada design for perfection or adaptation when Arctic reality contradicts perfection regularly? F-35 specialized requirement creates complete operational paralysis. Storm-delayed specialized fuel delivery eliminates F-35 combat capability entirely. Grip and adaptation maintains sovereignty despite logistics failure. Strategic vulnerability definitively exposed. F-35 fuel dependency creates single critical choke point. Disrupt specialized fuel supply. Ground entire fleet regardless of aircraft readiness. Gripe in flexibility creates resilience through fuel diversity. Attack one supply source. Aircraft switches alternatives maintaining operation. Design philosophy comparison. Pentagon assumes logistics perfection. Sweden assumes logistics failure. Arctic operations validate Swedish assumptions empirically. Weather disrupts logistics systematically and predictably. Adaptation capability wins when perfection becomes unavailable, which Arctic guarantees regularly. Tom Harrison's final assessment, multi-fuel capability sounds irrelevant discussing specifications until fuel delivery doesn't arrive during Arctic storm while Russian bombers actively probing your airspace testing response gaps. Then multi-fuel becomes the difference between defending sovereignty independently versus requesting American assistance. Because your fighters too, refined drinking only specialized fuel delayed weather. Aircraft adapting to available resources keep flying. Aircraft requiring perfect resources stay grounded. Arctic never provides perfection. Only adaptation works here. Your second shareable quote, F-35's $8 per gallon fuel premium costs $340 million annually globally while creating critical vulnerability when logistics fail. Gripen's multi-fuel capability eliminates additional costs while providing operational resilience when supply chains collapse. That's not cost trade-off, that's vulnerability versus adaptation when reality refuses cooperation. Screenshot that. Hit subscribe for defense analysis where practical engineering determines combat outcomes because Gripen running on any available fuel versus F-35 requiring exclusively specialized JP-8 plus 100 isn't mundane logistics detail. It's design philosophy determining whether aircraft fly or sit grounded when supply chains fail. Tom Harrison's alert fuel crisis empirically proved multi-fuel flexibility maintains operations when specialized requirements create vulnerability. $340 million annual Pentagon costs eliminated completely through multi-fuel engineering. Canadian Arctic operations systematically disrupt fuel logistics, making adaptation strategically essential. Pentagon designs for perfection. Sweden designs for reality. Arctic reality contradicts perfection continuously. Fuel flexibility wins when logistics fail. Logistics fail regularly, 817 kilometers from North Pole.